Welcome back to the Global Landscapes Forum 2019 here in Accra, Ghana, where we're actually coming to the end of a, an amazing two-day event, working to restore Africa's landscapes from the ground up. And I guess for my final interview, we have Client Earth, um, who are joining us, which is a charity that uses the power of the law to protect the planet and the people who live in it. They're lawyers and environmental experts who are fighting against climate change and to protect nature and the environment in Europe and beyond. Uh, and with me today, I have uh, Joseph Wines, who is based in Brussels and is the Senior Law and Policy Advisor at Climate, Client Earth. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And to my right, I have Lucia Gala, who is a lawyer um, at Heritage Partner and Associates in Liberia. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so maybe we'll start with you. Um, Joseph, please tell me more about what Client Earth um, does, more about your organization and okay. your role. Well, your introduction was quite good, actually. Okay, thank you. Uh, but <laughs> We're an environmental law organization. Um, our home is Europe, where uh, we work on quite a number of different uh, areas that may be uh, biodiversity, air quality, um, but also forests, oceans. Um, and then beyond Europe, we also have uh, an office in China, and we also work here in Western Central Africa. Um, and here in Western Central Africa, that is forest work. And I am part of the forest team, actually. Um, and so part of the kind of, it's a crew division, but uh, part of the kind of the supply side, the countries that produce timber and export it to uh, the EU, whereas some of my colleagues in the forest team then work more on the Euro European side, looking at what kind of uh, products we import. OK, great. And, and so what's the connection with, uh, with, your, your, with your agency and, and Client Earth? So true to what you've said about Client Earth, yes. um, that we use the law as a tool mm. uh, for people, uh, forest and climate. Uh, the organization I work with is a law firm in Liberia. Mm. Um, the biggest one. Yes, <laughs> relatively <laughs> the biggest one. Okay. She wouldn't and, say that herself. <laughs> and so um, we are involved in the general practice of law. Mm. However, we have um, practice areas, and one of those practice areas is natural resource management. Mm. So in that area, we collaborate with Client Earth, mm. um, and we work on uh, forestry issues, land issues, and climates. So that's how yeah. um, what well, the connection is. Okay, yes. great. Yes. So I was going to say, like, you know, so tell us the power of law. Why is that important in protecting landscapes? Huh. I'm a lawyer, so of course I will tell you a law is good. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't tell you otherwise. But uh, for us, we, we, we are of the opinion that law helps uh, define uh, what uh, each person or each part in the society, their roles and their responsibilities. It helps uh, predict uh, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, acceptable as well. So. Um, Having laws, um, structure, the environment, uh, how people use land, how people manage, sustainably manage uh, the forest is very important. So we, we are all for the law. Okay, great. And I, I guess, I mean, without legal frameworks and people knowing their rights, then, mm -hmm. then I guess I don't know where we're going. Uh, yeah, it's true. You know, yeah. it, if we're all talking about this rights-based approach, the rights where you find them yeah. is in law. Yeah. Uh, be that you know the the, the, the statutory laws, uh, 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 as the laws that are written down in books, but also more the customary law. Um, rights are there. The the law is actually where uh, we find the rules that uh, determine our relationship mm -hmm. between people, mm -hmm. but also as people with our environments. Um, so it's at, at the beginning uh, of, of those rules. Okay, great. So what, what kind of issues are you dealing with maybe for in, on the African continent? What are the, the main you know, legal issues that you find? Um, or okay, look, looking back at our work, I think um, one of the first things that uh, we were confronted with was that uh, laws were not available and not accessible. So uh, the first part of what we did in, in, in most of the countries that we work in Central and West Africa is collect the different laws that relate to forests, mm -hmm. that relate to uh, biodiversity and to land, and have them accessible in, in a way that is um, uh, useful for the people that want to use it. So that can be on our website in an electronic copy, but we also have them in a hard copy in books. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so that was the first uh, step. Secondly, I think lawyers is often, law is often seen as something strange, something far away. It's only for lawyers. Uh, but as you said, we all have rights. Mm -hmm. So law actually belongs to all of us. So part of our work is to allow people to better know what is in the law and use it. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can make it as one of the tools in their toolbox uh, to better manage forests and land. Okay, great. Um, and in terms of Liberia uh, specifically, you know, what, what are the kind of issues that you, you're facing with the environment and the work that you do um, on the ground? So our approach is to be real about the issues mm. um, mm. and bring interventions that will create change. So we work with, uh, on the project with Client Earth, mm. we work with NGOs mm. and CSOs uh, and communities. So we have um, a forum, we call it the Legal Working Group. Okay. So we assemble community members and CSOs and they bring their issues to the table mm. and we help them use the law again to address those issues. Uh, for example, we've observed that the communities in Liberia have had issues with contracting. Mm -hmm. So um, there are issues about benefit sharing, um, whether the, co the, the, the contracts are at arm's length and all of that. So we've tried to intervene in that respect to help them draft contracts that will take away these issues. So it's basically about the issues that communities and NGOs bring to us. And, and is it pro bono work or is it or they come to you as clients where they pay for your services? How does, how does it work? So as I said, we, mm -hmm. we create this platform. Okay. So it is pro bono yeah. on our work with Client Earth yeah. that, that we assemble community members and TSOs mm -hmm. and they bring those issues to us. Right. Mm. So we help um, when they come. When they come. So we don't charge them. But we are funded. Right, yeah. uh, so uh, one of our main funders currently for this uh, work is uh, the, the British uh, government, okay. DFID. Mm, okay. uh, they are one of the main funders, but we are we're not charging the yeah. communities yeah. Uh, that yes, we are yeah, training. I, mean, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't think so. I just wanted to make sure that, yeah, you know, yeah. see this mm -hmm. is how, how it yeah. works. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, so what are the main challenges you see facing, you know, um, in, in terms of empowering people on the ground? Um, Legally, I guess, with the, the, in terms of law. Yeah, so I mentioned the, the, the availability of law, that was one, yes. uh, being able to, to, uh, to use it, mm -hmm. and um, I lost my train of um, thought, let me quickly go back. Can I quickly yeah, go yeah, back to my notes? Back, yeah, so maybe I'll just come to you and ask you, like, what are the main yes. challenges that you find in terms of you know, empowering people and then knowing their rights? Because you work specifically in Liberia, right? Yes. So what, yeah. yes. So, so, so um, contracts are one of them? Yes. Yes. But there's also the perception that um, lawyers are only to wear black gowns mm. and go and wear the wigs and go to court. And uh, the public opinion is that that is where our work is and that's where the, that's the essence of lawyering. Mm. But we've also found out that uh, legal empowerment is also a very, very good way of, of, of lawyering. Mm. And it's impactful. You can see the impact. Um, like within a short period of time. So by working with the communities, uh, empowering, empowering them legally, um, helping them understand what the law is, because we've also come to the, the recognition that the laws are not available, one, two, they do not understand the text of the law. Mm. So we have to explain it to them in a way that they will understand it and then apply it. So yes. that's yeah. basically cool. I think uh, the, the third point I was uh, looking for yeah. was, um, that sometimes laws have been written quite a long time ago. Right. And this is now an example maybe from Ghana. Mm. Uh, uh, some of the laws that uh, govern forests here are from 1927, right. uh, from the 60s, yeah. uh, uh, before and just after independence. Um, and the way we as a society looked at forests then has completely changed. changed yeah. uh, so there is a need to maybe review some of these laws and bring them together in something that is coherent uh, and would also cover some of the new areas uh, like uh, carbon rights, which uh, was not an issue in 1927. Right. Yes. <laughs> uh, to, to bring those laws together, uh, yeah. review them, and bring them in a coherent uh, and more modern piece of legislation. Okay, great. So, are, are there any success stories that you could sh share with us? Um, mm -hmm. 
yeah. the work that you've oh, done. Many. Oh, yeah, I'm sure uh, that's great. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start with one from uh, okay. Liberia, if I may. And, uh, Lucia is going to correct me if I get it wrong. Uh, it's one on gender. Mm -hmm. uh, and it shouldn't always be the women that speak about gender. Exactly. <laughs> one of the stories I really remember yeah. um, is we organized these uh, training for women active in the forestry sector, mm -hmm. uh, legal trainings. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we should do them on a yearly basis. And uh, the first year, uh, we gave training on what the rights are of women in decision making on community forests. And one of the things is that they have the right to a slot mm -hmm. in the decision making body. And so, in the second year, when we're doing the second uh, women's training, uh, we asked, so what has changed since, uh, since last year? And one of the women came back with a story saying that she was in her community and she had heard that some uh, group of people were sitting there and discussing uh, their community forest. Mm. And she noticed it's only men. Whoa. So she walked up to me and said, you know that actually the law says yeah. at least one female representative yes. should take part in these discussions. And so then she went on and took part. Um, and I think it was a nice example of how uh, knowing what your rights right. are can yeah. be a very empowering uh, tool to make sure that every part, everybody participates in the discussions and in decisions that they have to make on their forest. Yes, that's very true. Yeah. Hmm. Are there any stories you can share that you would off the top of your head? Yeah, you well, I, I don't think I can tap that story. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> but uh, also, too, um, again, it's from the perspective that legal empowerment is uh, another very good tool that we should also use. Um, so we identified uh, the issue of contracting mm. that we've um, gleaned from our discussions with communities. Mm. Um, so we've, we've, uh, we've worked with the communities on a contract, mm. a 30 page contract. Wow. And there, there are issues of illiteracy, right? And concern as to whether the communities will fully comprehend what is in a contract. So people doubt as to whether uh, our system works because in Liberia, the communities are given the opportunity to contract mm. with private entities, uh, timber companies. So there are, all, there, there are always the question as to whether the communities are able to uh, negotiate and sign contracts that are at arm's, arm's length. Mm. So we've worked with the communities over a period of a year or so. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm telling you, it's a 30-page document. Even I'm the lawyer, I have to take time to read right, it. Right. But surprisingly, we've, we've seen that uh, the communities understand the template. They can explain it themselves. They know what is in there. Mm. And if, if given the opportunity, they can, they can sit down and discuss that template with um, a private, a private com uh, company. So I think that is a success, success story because they are learning. They are wisening up as to what to look for when they are, when they are negotiating, mm -hmm. when they are writing or signing contracts. So that, for me, is, 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 is a success, success story. So, yes. Great. Yeah. And yeah, I guess just to, to wrap everything up, it's like um, talk about your experience here at the GLF related mm. to the work that you're doing. Um, yeah, this was our first time. Okay, yeah. first time. Uh, GLF. So Great. I have, uh, yeah. I cannot compare it okay, to, yes, to, to any other. other uh, yes. To oh, how, how was your experience? But we we uh, uh, we booked for one of these uh, stands, a booth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I have to say that worked quite well for us. Uh, so it was a place where we could come together, base camp, mm -hmm. uh, but it was also uh, an opportunity to show some of the the tools that we work with, yeah. and a lot of people that were interested in the type of work that we do would mm -hmm. walk up. And it would be really a, an opportunity to exchange, see whether we could ex um, share information, okay. think about potential future partnerships. So aside from the very interesting sessions, <laughs> which if you have, you've done already quite a lot of interviews, so yes, they may yeah. have come up. I thought that uh, having a booth was actually a, a very positive experience for us. Great, great. And, mm -hmm. and for you? I think for me, it's more of the networking. Mm. Yeah, as Jeff said, uh, this is our first time. Yes. So, yes, uh, we get to meet new people, new organizations, and hear about what they are working on. And you, you also have the chance to explain to them what you are working on. Right. So that, for me, is, is a good takeaway. OK, good. Well, I thank you both for making the time to come and have a chat with us and explain to us what your organization does. Yeah, because I think, I think, you know, 
law and, and legal frameworks are important, like like land tenure rights, you know, yeah. women's rights. I mean, yeah. we have to understand the law in order for us to, to move forward. So exactly. it is definitely an, um, an important area that mm -hmm. I guess you, you're my only one in the 20, in the 20 or 30 interviews that I've done okay. um, in terms of, you know, legal that I've, we've, we've spoken hmm. to. So um, okay. I'm glad that we've had you on board. And, um, and thank you for joining me. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.